What's going on everyone? Welcome to Moon Build Garage and welcome to part five of my CNC plasma table build. Uh, I've been working on the X and the Z axis of the table. Let me bring you in a little bit closer and I'll show you what's going on. All right, so let's start with the Z axis. Now, forget the motor for right now. I bought this entire assembly as an assembly. Um, you can get them with or without the motors, all different di brands out there. Um, since I bought my motors as a four pack, I bought the unit without the motor. Now what this does is this motor connects to the assembly via this coupler right here. And that coupler is attached to the other end or to the end of this screw shaft. And then as the motor turns, it raises and lowers this plate. And then your torch, your plasma cutter torch will mount to this plate. And that is what will control your Z axis or the height of your torch. Now, I will have a, a floating head here. And that way, as the torch is lowered, it'll touch the surface, trigger a switch, and then it'll back it off to the necessary cut height. But that'll be coming in another video. I'm actually working on that right now. So that'll be another video. Um, but that's really, I mean, very simply your Z axis. I just bought it as an assembly and I'll leave a link to it down below. The X axis or this axis here runs on this extruded aluminum rail. Now I bought this from Automation Direct and this is a one and a half inch wide by three inch high rail. Um, you can order them Imperial or metric. Looking back, I probably should have ordered a metric just because all the other hardware and mounting and everything is based on metric, but I'm making it work. Uh, so now Automation Direct, you can order this to specific lengths. You tell them what length you need, they'll cut it to size and ship it to you. I actually ordered this like an inch or two longer than what I thought I was gonna need, just in case. Had my measurements been off or I realized I had to make an adjustment somewhere, I would have a little bit to play with rather than have to order a whole new piece. Um, again, at the end of the video, when I go over the cost, I'll give you the cost breakdown of this rail. But I wanted to use aluminum instead of steel, just based on weight. I'm trying to, I want the gantry itself to be as light as possible. Um, now, for the movement of the X axis, if this was gonna be a router or an engraver or something that was actually gonna be in physical contact with the cutting material, then I would have mounted this either on some sort of linear rail, had a more positive mount between this assembly and the rail itself. But this thing, I mean, the way I have it mounted here is just butter smooth. And for a plasma, will work great. Let me take you on the backside and I'll show you what's going on. And the way that I have this mounted is just on rollers. I have two rollers on top, two on bottom, and they ride in this groove on top of the linear rail. Now, like I said, if I was gonna be doing this with a router or an engraver, or something that's gonna be in physical contact with this material that's gonna be cutting, I would have used a rail. But for a plasma cutter where this just needs to float, this is more than enough. And those wheels have enough positive contact in that groove that this thing is not going anywhere. Right now, I have maybe a thousandth or two of movement. And that's just because one of the wheels needs to be adjusted. But I've leveled this whole thing in relation to the rail, which is level in relation to the table. So, but this thing, like I said, is butter smooth, is nearly silent right now. I'm really happy with this. If it doesn't work out for any reason and I decide to mount it to a linear rail, I'll be sure to let you guys know. We'll see. Um, as far as the drive goes, I'm doing the same thing that I did with the side rails. I'm going to be doing a belt drive. So I got these two rollers here and there's a pinion right here on the bottom of the motor. And all that is attached to the back of that plate. And I got this plate here. Let's see if I can give you a better shot. There's this plate that the motor is mounted to, to the back of that Z axis. Um, that was just to give me all kinds of flexibility and mounting and adjustability. But overall, that is, should be more than enough. I'm really happy with the way that moves. Now, when it comes to the belt mounts, that was probably the most difficult part of this x-axis assembly let me show you what i got going on belt drive mount since my x-axis this extruded aluminum rail here needs to be adjustable in height that's what all these holes are for here along on the side bracket if i need to raise this gantry up 
or if I need to raise the x-axis for cutting stuff like square tubing or, or whatnot, I need the belt drive to be adjustable also. So working in CAD, I made come up with this design for a bracket that just mounts using the same mounting bolts as the rail. That way, when I take those bolts out to move the rail, the bracket will come out and it loosened the bottom quite enough. And then as I move the rail up, the bracket will move with it. And then that way, my belt drive will be exactly in line no matter where I mount that rail. And honestly, so there's going to be two of these, one on this end, one on the other, configured a little bit differently, and I'll go into that in just a second. The hardest part was coming up with this measurement, how far out this bracket needs to go, because I need the end of this bracket to be in line with the rollers on the belt that way, or the rollers on the motor, that way when the belt is riding on that roller, it will be exactly in line. The belt can come out of those rollers right out past or be exactly in line with that bracket. Reason being, on one end, the belt's going to come around and then with one of those mounting tabs like this here, these locking strips, that will screw right to that. This is actually going to be my belt tensioner for this side. It's actually going to, the bolt will go through this hole. And I just took a piece of angle iron here and uh, welded a nut to it, drilled and tapped a hole. And then I took one of those mounting, those locking strips, cut it in half, drilled and tapped the hole for that. Now the belt will get locked to that. This will go through there and then I'll be able to adjust that belt tension by tightening this bolt right here. But I need to get these brackets cut out of some eighth inch plate first. And the plate that I'm gonna to use to make those brackets is the same plate that I use to make the side rails and these end plate brackets also. Since I have a bunch of that stuff left over. All right, so there's the, uh, the first bracket. Now, I did screw up, and I did drill the quarter inch hole for the tensioning bracket a little bit off. So, welded it up, smoothed it out, and drilled a new hole. No big deal. 
Now I get to build another one for the other side minus the uh, tensioning bracket. Let's do that. There you go, guys. There's the second bracket. There's the locking strip for the belt. Belt's in place. Everything has been tensioned using my little tension bracket there. And everything rolls along. Again, the motor will turn the pinion. Everything rolls on these two rollers. And there we go. There's the X axis. So there you go, guys. There's the X and Y axis done. Uh, next, I'll be doing the floating head or the floating mount for the torch head. Uh, I still got to do a water pan. And then obviously I got to start figuring out controller and drivers and all that good stuff. The electronics. Not looking forward to, to that stuff. Um, I don't know if I said this earlier, but a good source for a lot of these parts, obviously Amazon, but openbuilds.com. Uh, not sponsored. I did uh, pick up some hardware from there, like these spacers on the wheels to space this out, you know, enough for the to ride on the rail. Uh, the wheels, a lot of these brackets and stuff like that you can get from Open Builds. Again, not sponsored. Um, I do have a link down below that is an affiliate link. So if you use that and you buy anything, obviously I'll get a small commission, no cost to you. Uh, it just helps the channel out. Uh, again, openbuilds.com. Not sponsored, but a really good source for 3D printer parts, uh, CNC parts. Go check them out. Really good source. So cost uh, that extruded aluminum rail uh, automation direct they charge 99 cents an inch i bought 55 inches of it so that's 54.45 again i bought it like an inch or two over knowing that i would cut it down and that way that gave me a little bit of flexibility but 54 bucks uh, again two of the motors 10 bucks a piece because i bought them as a four pack that's another 20 that x-axis bracket the whole assembly if it was 5980 i'll leave a link to that down below got that on amazon uh the timing pulleys again for the the two that go on the motor for the belt three dollars and 32 cents the bracket was 325 wheels uh, at openbuilds.com those are 519 a piece so twenty dollars and 76 cents for wheels you can get them cheaper if you buy maybe like a bracket that already has wheels you you know, you can get some, you can find them, they're on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below to a couple that I've found. Uh, and the spacers, I got a 10 pack of those aluminum spacers for just over three bucks, 339. So for today's total, it's 163.10 with a five day total of just over $500, literally $500 and 14 cents. Still not bad. Maybe a little bit more than what I was looking at up to this point but still not a bad price that is just smooth appreciate you guys for watching hit that subscribe hit the bell and i'll see you on the next one